We're at Melwood, uh, which is really, really lovely, a nice thing to be able to say. And we're here uh, because, well, if you don't know, uh, you should know by now, but Liverpool women now train at Melwood, which is fantastic. And I'm now uh, with the woman who's played more for Liverpool Football Club than any other. And that's quite a cool sentence as well, Gemma Bonner. Yeah, I mean, when you say it like that, um, you probably don't realise until people actually say it to you. Um, but yeah, it's an achievement I'm incredibly proud of. And hopefully there's a few more left yet. I'm sure there is. Um, start with with Sunday with with Stamford Bridge. We'll come on to that and talk about this this run of fixtures. But mm -hmm. last time we spoke to you, you very kindly came in to see us in the studio, mm -hmm. and it was a bit up in the air what you were doing next. If you knew you were coming back, you weren't telling us. <laughs> <laughs> you were keeping your cards close to your chest. But was it something that was on your mind generally? Because you've been, I mean, here, there, mm -hmm. and everywhere playing football and, and what, what a life. But was it in the back of your mind that, well, maybe one day I'll go back to Liverpool? Or, or can you not really think like that because there's so much going um, on? It's probably hard to say. Um, but I know that when I did leave the first time, it wasn't an easy decision. Um, and I think I always felt inside me like I would love to come back and play for Liverpool. Um, didn't know if it was happen. Didn't know when it would happen or if it would happen. Um, and I guess for me, I had to carry on building my career, um, challenging myself. And I think every step that I've done in my career has challenged myself. Um, it was obviously a while since being away from the club. And I think going away to a different league, playing in America, coming back, um, obviously the timing of the seasons was very different. But I knew I'd, I'd challenged myself in the league abroad, but I knew I wanted to be back in the WSL. Um, I was very aware I didn't want to make an emotional decision, but I think the way that the club had kind of almost bounced back and I thought the, probably, the feeling around the club had changed. I think there was a lot of bad press, I'd say, um, in terms of a lot of players that left the club and, and where the training facility was and everything like that, um, which was hard for me to see, um, obviously having such a connection with the club. But I think obviously the, the past couple of years, um, things have really turned around and definitely on the progress, progressive side. So I was very conscious I didn't want to make an emotional decision, but at the same time, it was a new challenge for me coming back. Um, completely different team, new staff, new environment. And I think knowing what the club's plans were, um, as you can see, we're, we're back at Melwood, which I think is unbelievable. Um, and for me, kind of coming back in here, um, it was definitely... Definitely for me the right decision, um, and I'm so happy that I could actually come back. Well, I mean, we're delighted as Liverpool supporters that you are here, and, and you made a, a difference straight away. But let's talk a little bit about Melbourne because you, mm. you've you've mentioned it where we are. I was driving up here, and Jordan, one of our camera guys, I was like, "Have you been to Melbourne before?" Because I knew I should be, and he was like, "No, no." And I was like, "It'll take your breath away because uh -huh. it does." I mean, you guys are, are getting used to it now and getting used to the fantastic surroundings. But when you first come and, and the history, you're obviously mm. a Liverpool fan, so you, you know all about it but you know it's, it's well renowned in football isn't it but it's not a museum it's a state-of-the-art mm -hmm. facility as well mm -hmm. and it must make such a difference for you guys you know in terms of you, you, you're learning and growing and developing mm -hmm. here every day and it must be great yeah I mean when we first came in um, I think because I'd been here previously when the men's were in here and I would do some of my rehab here so it was almost very different coming back in and actually feeling like this is our home, like we actually belong here. Um, obviously before it was kind of, I would come in when the players had finished and to actually be able to have the same facilities and I would probably argue if not better because um, they've done an incredible amount of work on it. The pictures are unbelievable. And to actually come in every day and be like, wow, this is actually our home. Um, as a player, you have everything you need here. And I think we're in an environment now where we have no excuses. Um, so I think, all the players enjoy coming in. Um, we definitely have a fundamental foundation of working hard. And I think you can see that in the performances this year. I think our performances have elevated, but I think it also contributes in line with the pitches we have, the recovery, the food, nutrition. I think as a whole package, as a player, you're in an environment where we can come in, do our work, do our gym work, um, review games and make sure we're best prepared that we can be on a weekend. and. As a player, you want to be in the best position you can to perform. 
Absolutely. And, and they've, they've made it your home as well. Mm. And when you come in, there's, there's nods to the past. You know, we were smiling at a, a picture of, uh, I think it was from the Shankly area, and you've mm. got all the kids sat on the wall watching yeah. the train, which is which is crazy. And we were sort of smiling at that picture. But then you go into the gym, and I was lucky enough to have a bit of a tour uh, last week, and the gym's mm-hmm. full of pictures of you guys celebrating goals and, and victories and stuff like that. So it must feel like, although you remember you're in Melwood, mm-hmm. and there's those nice little touches there, it's, it's your home, isn't it? Definitely, and I think you know the fact that it's got such an incredible history attached to the club, and I know so many Liverpool fans were happy that the women could now call it our home and it still be a big piece of the club. Um, I think we definitely feel that. We definitely feel love from everyone around it, and we're very privileged to be here. I think we're very aware of that, but for us, it's now our home, and we want to try and keep on building on the history that's already been made. So when you did come back, how much did it feel like joining a new club and how much did it feel like, you know, just like putting an old, old pair of slippers on, I guess, because obviously your boss is still the same, Matt, yeah. and that, that must have been quite nice. And you had a couple of mates here as well, so it's attached to Ali and Shanice, but, but then like you say, it is a completely different squad. So it must have been a, a quite an unusual feeling in a way. Yeah, I mean, I was obviously nervous coming in the first day. I'd be lying if I, if I said I wasn't. Um, I knew some of the girls, but I hadn't really played with them. Um, and obviously Tash came in later towards the end of January. Yeah. Um, obviously I'd played with Shanice before, so there's a couple of familiar faces. Um, but again, it was at a different training ground. Um, a lot of new staff, obviously Matt was here, but it's been a long time that I'd worked with him too. Um, so I think obviously a lot, a lot of things had changed um, and there was kind of no time to really have a settling in period because the game started thick and fast come January. Um, so although my first game I, I'm trying to put to the back of my mind, um, I like to think things have definitely progressed since then. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we'll be able to sort of put on that because I think the second half of the season last year was better mm-hmm. than the first. And, and to be fair, that's been a general feature ever since Matt came in. You know, you can, you can say we've got better season by season, but if you actually break mm-hmm. it into half seasons, you know, we've got better that first season where you come up, we come up before we look stronger. Mm-hmm. And then last year, you obviously only come in in January, but the way we finished that season must have given everyone a lot of confidence going into this season, thinking, well, if we can get a few more in and things mm-hmm. like that, then you know, we can really have a go next year. Yeah, I think we definitely built on performances and I think that showed towards the latter end of the year. And I think almost we we took a lot of belief from that. I think towards the end of the year, we were taking points off teams that outside of the group, they didn't expect us to do that. Um, I think, so having those results towards the end of the season and getting a bit of momentum behind us, we we obviously had that belief in the group. Um, There was obviously quite a few players that came in January, so... For me, it was good that you know I wasn't probably the only one coming in mid-season, um, and I know Miri and Fuka were playing in America too. So we were almost kind of similar situations in terms of coming off the back of a full season. Um, but I think definitely we looked forward to coming back in this year. Um, we did a lot of hard work, and I think the additions in the off season have only really probably helped help strengthen us even more. And we had a long off season this year, so. It also gave us a chance to get the new players in um, because I think probably since I came in last year there's maybe 15 or 16 players that have come in um, which is quite a big turnaround but I think it shows the, the hard work that's gone in on the training pitch. Well, absolutely, and, and whatever you guys did in the summer really worked because the mm-hmm. season started with a real bang and mm-hmm. to go to and then he said, hi, we don't show me <laughs> to go to the Emirates, yeah. put in the performance that you guys did. But especially from a defensive point of view, because you've got new players either mm-hmm. side of you. You know, you, you, you go into it to, you know, a, a packed house, a, a team mm-hmm. who'd, you know, qualify for the qualifying stages of the Champions League mm-hmm. and, and are going to be one of the top teams again. And so to go there and, and put in the mm-hmm. performance you guys did and, and, and win, it was phenomenal. Yeah, I think. That day, probably everything was against us. Um, Obviously, we had a lot of illness within the camp that week and the team was changing. And it was almost as if, as a group, I mean, we're such a strong group together that we went into that and we said, we have nothing to lose. Um, We have everything to play for, enjoy being out there. And we knew that the pressure was on Arsenal. Um, And for us, knowing that there was going to be over 50,000 there, it was, you know, it's a very rare occasion for that at the moment in women's game. Um, I think it's definitely getting better, but they're the types of games as a player I definitely want to be playing in. Um, so for us, we made sure that you know we went out, we had each other's backs. 
we, we knew they were a good team, so they were going to have a lot of the ball. And I think we embraced that side of the game that we, we had to be hard to beat first and foremost. And on the flip side, we also know that we can score goals and we can yeah. hurt teams. So I think we're very good at probably embracing the hard work, but also having the belief that we're good enough to now not only compete, but go and beat teams. Um, and I think that was evident the first game of the season. And we've tried to build on that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and ever since then, you know, the, the performances, you know, have, have been good and obviously it's been, mm -hmm. you know, setbacks and things like that. But generally we're, we're sitting in a, in a positive position and, and considering mm -hmm. it, it feels like a, a new team. You know, we talk about the signings in the summer, but mm -hmm. it's a reminder that a few of you, you know, albeit second time for yourself, mm -hmm. have been here sort of less than a year. So it is a, a new team. So how quickly you've gelled and certainly from a defensive point of view, mm -hmm. how quickly you've gelled as a unit, you know, must really please you. Yeah, I think... You know, I'll go back to before, it's a good group. Um, it's an honest group and as players, we're quite honest with each other. And I think we always want to support each other. So we know that in training, I think it's it's been very competitive. We've got a good squad now, um, which you can see the rotation that's happened in the past couple of games that, you know, we still can change the team against City, but we still narrowly lose to them. Yeah, it's a good um, game, yeah. And I think we're also at the stage where we've drawn with Spurs, we've drawn with West Ham, but we're actually coming away from them games disappointed, which I show I think is a show of the marker where we're at and the mentality within the group because we're disappointed when we don't perform to what the level that we can do. Um, but I think that's only going to keep on growing. I think we're still quite a young group um, and we have to be patient in that. But for us... If we don't get beaten, obviously picking up a point away from home, um, that's definitely huge progression. And, you know, it's not an easy league. Um, I think we're, we're probably quick to forget that at times, that as long as we can keep picking up the points um, and the team are getting stronger every single game and getting used to, we've had players come over that it's the first time playing in this league. Um, so I think all the players have adapted really well. Um, but I definitely say we're, we're pushing each other constantly and, and that's probably showing on a weekend too. When you go into the game like the Emirates one, you know, you're, you're, you're a natural leader. You've had the, the armband at times this season when obviously because of need, need being out and things like that. Do you put a little bit extra on yourself in those games, especially when you've got young defenders either mm -hmm. side of you who've, who've, who've not played for the, for the club before? Is that something you're conscious of? Is that something you think of and you think, I need to step mm -hmm. up a little bit more and I need to lead on the pitch? Or, or is that just sort of naturally who you are anyway? I'd like to think it's naturally who I am. Um, I think I never try and be someone that I'm not. Um, but I think for me, the way that I like to play, the way I like to do things is do what I can do and control the controllables. Um, and, and I was aware in that game that we would probably be under pressure quite a lot. Um, so for me, it's... It's about staying switched on to make sure in the moments that, you know, we're obviously at the back, um, that we're going to be needed and being in the position at the right time, concentrating. And so I try and lead in, in how I do in my actions. Um, obviously, I like to put the body on my line, but for me, that's just my job in the role and the position yeah. that I'm in. So um, I enjoy that side of things. And I hope that, you know, we've got players in our team that can go up and do their job at the top end of the pitch. So... For me, I, I like to think it's just me, um, but I try and lead an example in everything that I do and whether that on the ball or off the ball, um, I try and take a lot of pride in that. Absolutely. Um, so many positives from this season and we're, mm -hmm. well, in my opinion, a little bit sort of further ahead than where I thought we'd be with a new team. But I guess the, the, the one sort of obvious negative is the, is the Everton game at, at Anfield. You know, how disappointing was that for you guys as a, as a group, you know, for, for supporters? Mm -hmm. Listen, you never want to lose to Everton. You don't want to lose from the point of view of, you know, with being in Anfield with a big crowd as well. But for you guys, you know, it must have been a tough one, you know, in the dressing room after thinking, we, you, you know, you're capable of playing so much better than you guys did on the day. Yeah, definitely. I think we didn't really put a good account of ourselves out that day. Um, and obviously we, we had so many fans that come out and support us. So I feel like we let ourselves down, but we also let the fans down. Um, and we knew within the group that that performance wasn't one that we'd prepared for or what we were capable of. Um, so I think we almost, you know, let Everton come into the game. Obviously, we had the goal disallowed early on. And, you know, if that stands, who knows, it could be in a different game. Absolutely. But for us, we're also at a stage where this is the, the league now. Um, these are the games and the derby games. It was probably a few players' first derby, so they've got a big taste of that. Um, so I think it was definitely a very big learning curve early on for us and 
almost, you know, we've we've gone from the high of beating Arsenal away, um, backing it up to Villa, and then kind of almost a reality check of, you know, we've we've still got to make sure that we turn up no matter who the opposition is. Um, so I think for us it was definitely a performance that we were really disappointed with, but I think. On the flip side, the the kind of reaction to that um, in the past couple of games, we, we're still even if we've gone a goal down, we're still kind of coming back and and the spirit and the fight in it. Um, so I think for us, we're definitely disappointed, um, but we have to put it behind us as quick as we can. And you know, there's no time because the games come thick and fast. Yeah. So we have to use the learnings from that game um, and make sure that hopefully it doesn't happen again. Well, that's it because we all want another game at Anfield. Mm -hmm. We're not sure at the moment whether that's going to happen. But, you know, for you guys, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure you all still want to play at Anfield. You might have had a disappointing yeah. af afternoon, but I'm sure for all of you, it's not like, oh, oh Anfield's <laughs> bad luck. We're not playing no. there. You just want to get back there and win. Oh, 100%. I mean, for me, out of love to play again the, the same game the next day back at Anfield because you kind of just want to put things right as quick as possible um, the fans are incredible um, and I think for us we, we want to be playing there we want to have as many fans not just if we play at Anfield but if we're playing at Prenton um, I think our away support is incredible um, so for me I'm I wouldn't say I'm biased but I do think we have the best fans in the league um, so to have them behind us cheering us on um, yeah, we, we want to put, put a performance on for them as well. Well, hopefully, yeah, we can get that sorted of between now and the end of the season. But you said before the City game, that was the, the, the record-breaking game for you. It's in the Conti Cup, so obviously mm -hmm. Matt makes changes sometimes. So when did you know that you were playing and, and were you conscious straight away that, that that's going to be the record? Yeah, I mean, um, obviously we had a few kind of players um change in the team last minute due to injuries and other situations um, but he did ask me am I am I okay to play and I was like yeah and he said you're gonna break the record you know I was like yeah <laughs> <laughs> so I mean for me as a player if I'm, I'm fit I'm healthy I want to play every minute I can um, so obviously it's up to him and he makes the decisions and um, going into the games but for me if if someone asks me do I want to play the answer is always going to be yes um, so yeah I was Delighted to obviously play in the game. Um, obviously, we were disappointed with the manner of how we conceded the goals, but I think it did show we played some really good stuff at times, yeah. um, even though we did make a lot of changes and there was a few last minute changes as well. But I think regardless of that, the, the mentality of the girls and the performance that we put on, um, it definitely showed that we've got a, such a strong squad this year. Do you allow yourself in these moments to kind of reflect on, on what you have achieved? Or I sometimes say this to footballers and they look at me like, no, we're just trying to win and stuff like that. And that's what separates, mm -hmm. you know, the top athletes from me. But <laughs> but do you allow yourself in those moments to go like, you know, well in Gemma? No, to be honest, I haven't. I haven't um, obviously, it was a three game week, so yeah. um, it kind of happened. That for me, I just go out and I try and do my job. And I think maybe... I'll say the more experience you get, um, the kind of you focus on the process rather yeah. than the outcome. Um, and that's something I've always tried to do and make sure that I prepare the same. And, you know, you've got your career doesn't last long. You've got however long after it to look back and, and reflect on what you have. Um, of course, it was an extremely proud moment for me. Um, as it as it is every time I, I play for Liverpool. Um, but yeah, I was, I mean, to say I scored on the night too. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I was happy for that, uh, but I wouldn't say I kind of let myself because we knew that there was a huge game again um, to get back in, recover, train, travel, back to London. Um, so yeah, you don't really get a chance to, to look back on these things just yet. Well, I, I'm led to believe that in one of the upcoming home games, and, and we'll finish off talking about the, you know, these games, but there's, there's some big ones coming up. There's obviously Stamford Bridge at the, mm -hmm. at the weekend, and then two home games, and I'm led to believe that there will be, mm -hmm. you know, it will be marked um, by the fact that you know, there's, there'll be some sort of presentation mm -hmm. or whatever it is. I'm not in charge, mm -hmm. uh, but I've got to believe that there is going to be something. And, and that's good and that's something to look forward mm -hmm. to, not just for you, but for your, for your whole family. And I feel like it's something that, that as a club, we've got better at. I mean, you play for a team that, that won the back-to-back -back mm -hmm. league titles. And, you know, in my opinion, probably not enough was made of that within the football mm -hmm. club. And listen, this isn't me 
trying to criticise because it's in the past, mm-hmm. but but now I feel like you look at what's been done for Natasha Dowry since mm-hmm. she's retired and how she's been, and now she's a legend officially, mm-hmm. and she's got a job which says mm-hmm. legend next to it, which is sort of really nice. It does mm-hmm. feel like we are marking the achievements, considerable achievements of this women's team a little bit better way. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think for me, just the fact that I can have my family at the game with me um, and kind of share that moment because as a player, you, you kind of give up so much family time, you miss occasions. And for me, I, I don't like to say sacrifice because it's the choice that you make. Yeah. Um, and as an athlete, you want to be playing and training and that's the, the lifestyle and the life almost because it's 24 um, seven. So it's hard obviously missing family stuff. And for me, I'm such a family person um, and I'm extremely grateful for the support that I have around me. So for me, I'm. I'm just super excited that they can actually be there to share the moment um, because I definitely wouldn't have played. You know, I said to my mum, she can't get to every game, um, but I would never have played as many games as I have done if, you know, she wasn't there to support me ever since I started out being a young fan. Um, so for me, the the game is, is going to be a special just purely because of the fact that I'm going to have family there that can and share the moment with me. But before all that, there's a little matter of Stamford Bridge against a very good Chelsea mm-hmm. team. I mean, it's a test is what you would say. It's a test for, for the team. Mm-hmm. It'll be good to see sort of where, where we're at. Obviously, the win at Arsenal mm-hmm. shows that, I guess, I guess no real fear, <laughs> respect, but no real fear. Yeah, of course. I think we, listen, we respect every single team in this league because um, it is one of the best leagues. And I think what we have to take is our performances against Chelsea last year. Um, I think we, we seem to perform well against them. It always seems to be a good game. Um, so I think we can go there with belief. Um, I think we, we've definitely become hard to beat. Um, but at the same time, we know that we can go and punish teams. Um, we've got a lot of options coming back. Um, we've obviously seen the, the attacking players we've got, um, the midfielders and the defenders. So, you know, if things aren't necessarily going up the way in the game, then we've got the ability to change things up, which I think is a huge strength of ours um, and something that we've maybe not always had available this year. Um, so I think, listen, it's another situation. The pressure's probably going to be all on Chelsea. Um, obviously, it's been announced about Emma Hayes, so they're going to be wanting to have a, a successful year in a final stint. Um, but for us, we'll do the same as we do every other game, we'll concentrate on what we do well, um, where we can exploit them. And I think we've definitely got good enough quality within the team that we can go and hurt them. Um, and obviously we're aware that they've played Champions League and travelled midweek. Um, but listen, they've got an incredibly strong yeah. um, squad. They've got so many changes that they can make and no matter who's out on the pitch, you know it's going to be a hard game. Um, but I think we can definitely go there with no fear and. As long as we put on an honest performance, then you know there's no reason why we can't get a result. Absolutely, and then bounce into those two home games. It's mm-hmm. Manchester United on the Wednesday, and then Brighton at the weekend, Man United in the Conti Cup, and the, mm-hmm. the Brighton game in the Women's Super League. And we just love more and more people to come down and watch. The crowds have really gone up, mm-hmm. uh, which is fantastic. And you know, ever since you know you saw to come back, you've, you're sure you'll notice mm-hmm. more and more people coming down, but. This team's worth backing and the, the football you're playing is, is great. And like you say, these are attacking players who are coming back, which is brilliant. It's amazing to see Leanne back. She's such an exciting mm-hmm. player to watch. Obviously, Shalice has had a few injury problems. So, so here's mm-hmm. so the, the firepower we've got. Sophie scored in now, which is, yeah. which is good. And, and then obviously at the back, Gemma's just going all boxed. So it's, it's, an, it's an exciting time to, to play and, and it's an exciting time to be a Liverpool women fan. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, I mean, I can speak from my experience of being on the pitch and hearing the fans behind us, um, both ha- home and away. And I think, you know, I can say on behalf of the team that the girls love having the fans there. Um, it definitely gives you that extra push in the game and especially the home games when, you know, it's because I think in the league now, the games are very close. Um, and knowing that you've got that extra push behind you from the fans, it can it can change the kind of game um, in terms of making it a home, a home game and obviously trying to affect the opposition. Um, but for us as players, we love having them. Um, and we're playing exciting football at the moment. Um, so hopefully they can enjoy that with us and, and keep cheering us on. Well, before all that, uh, there is a trip to Stamford Bridge on Saturday and then two home games, uh, Manchester United and Brighton. So I will see you there. But congratulations again on the record. Thanks so much uh, for your time today and best of luck for the rest of the season. Thank you.